Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got some really cool sheets to show you. Um, these are going to Ed in Crofton, Maryland. And uh, he's just been a real fun guy to deal with. Uh, had some, some running jokes go back and forth about uh, how uh, I was going to send him a cardboard sheath with crayon coloring. and So we had kind of like joked back and forth. And then when I get the box, when I get the box from him, it contains <laughs> a note written in the crayon color we had discussed <laughs> and a box of crayons and in this note <laughs> in this note he says <clears throat> I'm also enclosing the whole box of crayons so that you have quality Crayola crayons to produce quality cardboard sheets, not some dime store junk. All right, buddy. You asked for it, you're gonna get it. So, he wanted a sheath for his Essie Hunglis in OD Green with Cryptek Typhon. So this is what I came up with for him. Now you can see I've clearly used these Crayola crayons. They didn't have OD Green in there, so I used just the regular green and mixed a little brown in so it gets us pretty close I think and and this here this Cryptek Typhon is in fact made of genuine printer paper these eyelets are the good stuff these are Avery brand reinforcement labels and uh, the retention on this is actually disturbingly good <laughs> it's actually not that bad so, <laughs> uh, so he's gonna get this thing <laughs> I thought we would have a little fun with this. Actually kind of looks half decent, right? So, all right. That's what we got. Bevels and all. Spent about a half hour, 45 minutes on this thing. I thought that would be a pretty good, uh, pretty good intro to the video. So, all right. The real sheets. He has five different SE knives, and he wanted me to make some piggyback systems for them. So the first one is for his SE6 and his SE Izula 2. Now these both have, actually four of these five knives have the knife connection handle scales and he's got these beautiful OD green and black G10 scales. And uh, the only one that doesn't have TKC scales on it is because they don't even make the TK scales for that particular knife. So uh, I'm gonna show you all these sheets here. Sorry, keep rambling, getting off track. All right, so he wanted his SE6 to be uh, set up with Molly's. Uh, tech lock and he wanted the Azula to be a breakaway piggyback on it with uh, with the tech lock adapter so the, the Azula carries on its own tech lock and then connects to the SE6 whenever you need so OD green and Cryptek Typhon just like this sheet <laughs> all right so we've got nice click in there no rattle no play excellent retention Pretty much ballistic one hand draw. Comes off really nicely. And then your Azula. And that has, doesn't have so much of a click, but you can feel it seat into place. And it's got very good retention as well. Um, one thing with the Azula, you want to be careful because of the tech lock eyelet spacing. This eyelet is really close to where the blade is formed, uh, or where the sheath is formed around the blade. So you do have to just kind of be mindful and keep the tip of the knife upward as you're sheathing it. Otherwise, you're going to end up kind of wedging the blade into the pinched kydex. You're not going to hit the eyelet and damage your, your uh, edge or anything, but you will pinch the blade edge into the, uh, the kydex where it comes together somewhere around this point, And it'll kind of, you know, it just won't be a smooth entry and draw. But if you keep that tip lifted, it's really, really quite nice. There you go. Uh, down here is an Exotac fire rod holder. He has the extended fire rod. It's, uh, it's about three quarters of an inch, I want to say, longer than the regular rod. I don't have a an extended one. I do have the regular one kicking around somewhere. Well, whatever. Um, I've got a regular rod. There we go. On the other sheet. All right, so it'll go in like so. And I'm going to send him some shock cord to tie to his rod and loop it down over the end of it and that retains it after the point where you've used the rod 
and it becomes a little smaller because you're scraping material off, it loses its retention, like so. This, this is a used rod. You can see I've scraped a little material off. So it won't retain itself, and it needs that shock cord after you've used it a little. Um, as far as the carry setup goes, <clears throat> excuse me, carry setup, right now I've got it set up with the mollies on it. These are a little more difficult to put on it, um, so I chose to, to put these on in advance for him. And if you do want to switch to a tech lock, you of course, because mollies have to be at one and a half, or sorry, at, a, at three quarter inch spacing um, for the actual mounting holes, and then at one and a half inch intervals laterally to fit into molly webbing, uh, it actually is identical spacing for a tech lock. So your tech lock can go innately on this plate at the same vertical or 90 degrees canted off of that um, as these molly locks here. You also have the option of removing this plate altogether and putting the tech lock directly on the SE6 sheet. If you choose to do that, you'll be able to carry it vertically, horizontally, or canted at a couple different angles for a comfortable cross draw. So you do have options. Um, the other really cool thing about this sheath, actually both of them, <clears throat> is that they are technically ambidextrous. So you can swap out every component of this to the opposite side of the sheath and find a way to make that work. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. Pretty cool little built-in feature. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. Haven't had my coffee today. All right, the last thing on this one to show you is that the Azula, like I said, it's a breakaway. It is on its own tech lock, so you can see that standing off there. How it works, essentially, is you just grab it and slide it upward out of that, out of that adapter. Then you've got your Azula ready to carry on its own. You can do whatever you want to do with it. And uh, if you want to reconnect it back to the bigger sheath, all you have to do is seat this. You got to plug this back in. It doesn't plug straight in because the tops of this are actually narrower than the bottom of the tech lock. Uh, so how you want to do it, if you can see this, you kind of put it in at a little bit of an angle, like so. I know it's a little bit funky to try to show that to you on camera. Maybe I can do it upside down. I'll try. All right, so <clears throat> you want to put it in like so, and then just kind of twist it until the tech lock lays flat, and then you can just slide it down in there. And that should work really nicely. This is a pretty strong hold. There, of course, is, is an amount of pressure that you can use to overcome this, but for the most part, this is a really secure little holder. Um, just to make a point here, I will, I'm not touching the Azula, you can see. violently shaking this thing nothing that thing hasn't moved even at all even a, even a little bit so it's in there really secure um, you don't have to worry about that falling out on you same thing with the knives always put really good retention on the sheets and you don't have to worry about it yet you have a very easy ballistic one-handed draw all right so that is the Azula on the SE6 really cool look with that Typhon on OD green with these beautiful TKC scales um, next up we have a bigger system here. I'll take my hunglus out. Get this guy's hunglus. All right, so this is <clears throat> the SE hunglus, the SE3, and the SE CR 2.5. Now the 2.5, as I said, they don't have TKC scales for it, at least not yet. So that's why this one is just its natural uh, factory micarta. <sighs> Sorry again. All right, so here we go. OD Green again with Cryptek Typhon for all the accents and attachments. Um, this guy is set up currently as a baldric as well as a drop leg. Obviously, you're not going to leave both things attached. I mean, you could, but if you're going to carry this as a baldric, I would probably just take the dangler and leg strap off, and if you're gonna carry it as a drop leg, you're gonna take the baldric sling off. Um, but I just left it all kind of set up so that you can choose which way you're gonna go with it, Ed, and uh, yeah, it should be carte blanche there for you. 
So clearly we have here just the two knives on the front and then an Exotac fire rod holder again for the extended rod. Um, all these nice reinforcement plates, everything on this is really rigid. So <clears throat> this might be a good opportunity to show you. There, is, there are different types of piggyback sheaths, obviously. This is what I call a fixed piggyback, meaning that both of these knives are permanently attached to the larger sheath. You can unscrew them and take them off, obviously, um, but they are, for all intents and purposes, you can't just quickly separate them. It requires the use of tools, screws, all that good stuff. Whereas this is what I would call a breakaway piggyback, which allows you to quickly separate the two knives. So um, just kind of trying to keep throwing terminology out there for people. Um, this is not something, this breakaway, this isn't something uh, many others, if any others, are doing right now. So it is, uh, I don't know if there's common terminology for it. That's just what I call it. So um, hopefully not confusing too many people with, with uh, you know, my own personal terminology there. But I uh, just wanted to clarify that. So, all right, we've got here those two knives on the front, the x -Tac fire rod down below, these two D-ring loops at the bottom. <clears throat> and if you notice, these are single point attachment. That means that you can alter their location and put them anywhere on the sheet. That also means that if you wanted to add, say like a chest harness to this, you would have a lot of options for how and where you can position this on your chest or back with a three point harness. So it's a really cool, um, just kind of, I guess, upgrade to what I was doing before. And what I'm doing with, with these, even though it's a single point attachment, it's very strong. And I put some thick rubber spacers between the adapter and the sheath so that it's really rigid. It doesn't want to move on its own. And of course, you always have the option of doing something like putting some thread lock or Loctite or something like that on it to keep those screws really, uh, really tightened down. Um, we have a leather dangler up here. It's got the logo, the American flag stamped into it, it's black. Same type of adapter for the D-ring there. And then this plate, <clears throat> this plate is actually something, so it's something that's necessary for the dangler on this. Um, I could have instead, I could have affixed the dangler directly to the sheath up here, but I decided to go with a plate instead because it, A, makes it ambidextrous. You can flip this plate to the other side of the sheath, no problem. Um, B, the plate actually, in my opinion, makes a little bit better, um, a little more comfortable for baldric carry. It's a very, very small difference, but to me, I like it because it puts a little bit more of the weight away from the handle, and it kind of makes it hang at just a slightly more comfortable angle on your side, to me, anyway. Um, so I really like doing those. The third reason I put this plate on here, instead of just directly fixing the dangler to the uh, to the sheath was because if you notice these spacings here look very suspiciously straight that's because these two rows here in the center are actually molly compatible so as I was designing the two sheaths it occurred to me that you've got five SE knives and two of them are kind of bigger they can be kind of the the base sheath for any of the other three and it would be a really cool thing if maybe uh, it could just all be interchangeable stuff. So you can put the mollies on this hungless, and you can put um, you can put the D rings on this SE6 and use it as a Baldrick setup. You can move actually, so you can't really see it uh, on the front side of the sheet, but if you look, there is a row of eyelets set up straight all the way down to the logo. And that allows you to put this tech lock adapter on the hungless as well. So you have a lot of options as far as swapping out parts uh, between these two sheets. And I think that's a lot of fun. It just gives you the ability to, to you know, rock it however you want on a given day. It does take a little bit of time to, uh, to swap those parts out. And if you'll, you'll notice as you start to take this stuff apart, some of it is kind of tricky where you have to like, you have to put the you know female screw through the main sheath but not the male screw in to hold it and then you've got to put another plate on top of that screw two of those screws in and it's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle so 
you gotta have a little bit of time and patience to deal with it but um but yeah you can swap absolutely every element out between these two sheets which is really awesome um as far as the fit goes here let's check out the cr 2.5 has a crisp little draw on it nice little click in no rattle no play same thing with the sessi 3 nice draw nice click in and the hungless of course nice draw nice click in sounds a little bit like a soft click in i'll explain this in a little bit but the retention on all of this stuff is excellent apologize for all the strap rattle there so anyway i'm really happy with how all of it came out uh, as far as the baldrick sling itself this is a beechen tactical baldrick sling uh, if you guys haven't checked out Jacob Peterson's work over at Beach and Tactical and the Preppers Bunker Outdoors, you need to go do that. The dude is an absolute wizard with uh, with webbing work. He does my chest harnesses, and uh, my default is to just go right to him for any kind of slings um, that I'll be using on your work. So if you prefer something else, obviously let me know, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to find a better, a better Baldrick sling than Beach and Tactical. Um, so that's what we got here, and that is in Cryptek Typhon with black paracord woven over the whole thing. Um, just a quick note, Baldrick Carry is, in my opinion, it is the best option for any large knife. Um, obviously, large is going to be kind of a, a relative term, and I'm not going to try to define it exactly. But if the knife is, you know, weighs more than like a pound, and uh, if it's more than... I don't know, like a 10 inch blade or something. I would probably just go for a Baldrick carry, to be honest. Um, shoot, even, uh, I don't know, maybe even more than like a 12 inch overall length. I would probably go for a Baldrick personal. Um, it's really comfortable. It bears weight really easily. So you don't have to worry about the feeling of, you know, I hate the feeling of a heavy system kind of pulling on one spot on my belt. That's just, I don't like that. Although if you are gonna do it, adding that leg strap makes it a lot better. Uh, but yeah, this is just a really comfortable, easy way to carry. You can do it without a belt. You can be wearing athletic shorts, whatever. You can throw this on before you throw on a big rucksack with hip straps. It's not going to inhibit carrying like a belt sheath would. Uh, those hip straps just get in the way of belt sheaths. Um, so yeah, this is Baldrick is, is really probably overall my favorite way to carry, especially if it's a heavier knife. Just food for thought there. Um, <clears throat> Alright, one thing I would love to discuss real quick is that I get a lot of questions from people about, you know, I have such and such a knife, but it's got TKC scales on it. Um, is that going to be okay? The answer is unfortunately not really black and white. I would say that you should always default to being willing to send your knife because then I can guarantee a perfect fit on everything. If you if you trust me to use the factory scales to form a sheath for your TKC scales, there may be some issues. I'm not saying there will be, but there may be. And I know that the uh, TKC scales are designed to fit with the SE factory sheaths, but factory sheaths and custom Kydex are two very, very different things. Even with factory Kydex sheaths, um, and I'm not saying anything bad about their work. They do really excellent work. Um, but it's a different animal. And uh, particularly, you know, like one of my shticks is that there's no rattle, no play. I don't want your knife rattling around. I hate that feeling. I hate that sound. Um, so I always try to make the cheese really stable, solid, but also have a really easy one-handed ballistic draw, all that stuff. Um, with the factory sheaths, you oftentimes are not going to have that same kind of uh, no rattle no play whatever quality to your sheath and <clears throat> if you're switching between uh, the regular factory scales and TKC scales you might also notice a little bit of a fit difference they are they're quite different in terms of their overall uh, contour so that makes for definitely a different fit when you try to put those knives in so I'm going to show you really quick um, I molded this hungless sheath using the factory scales. It clicks in really nicely, very secure, really good draw on it. I was really happy when I found out 
that the TKC scales, while they don't have the same kind of, uh, it's not quite as loud a click, but it is a very, very secure um, uh, retention on your sheath. Really nice, smooth draw. It worked really nicely. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that one was fine. With the SE3, I molded it using the factory scales. The factory scales were a little bit loose when I put, or actually a little bit tight, sorry, when I put the TKC scales in, and so I had to adjust the retention. And now, putting the factory, sheet, uh, factory scales back in, yes, it fits, it clicks in, it's secure, but I don't, I don't know if you can see or hear it, but there is a little bit of a rattle. It's noticeable. I don't like it. And, you know, the retention, it's okay. You'd get away with it, but it's not great. So, the SC3, it didn't really work as well. CR 2.5 doesn't count. All right, SC6. I formed this one with my own knife with TKC scales on it um, so it worked perfectly when I switched over to these ones <clears throat> by using the factory scales it is it is really tight I mean it's it's bad I would absolutely not send this out to a customer for their factory factory scales it's just it's painful on my thumb to draw that it's so tight so but it works great with these. Then finally we got the Azula 2. Now this one was pretty interesting. The Azula 2 with factory scales. If you look, it's like it doesn't even look like it fits. You can push it in a little bit and it wants to pop right back out. It's got that just doesn't seem to want to go in. If you push it just a little bit further, you can actually feel it click in. It's super solid and the draw is actually not bad. Um, but it definitely feels uncomfortable as you're putting that, that knife into the sheet. Same thing with the Izula 1 factory scales. Doesn't want to go, doesn't want to go, and then if you push it far enough in, it'll click in place and it's fine. But, <clears throat> yeah, so you can get away with it. All of these you can technically get away with swapping between the two. Uh, I just wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't actually fit perfectly, and uh, and that's a little bit disappointing to me. I was really hoping that all of them would just kind of be universally interchangeable, but that is unfortunately not the case. Um, the other thing is now SE has recently started producing their own Contour G10 handle scales. Uh, they call them the 3D scales. So those are also technically factory scales, um, and they look a little more like they fit the same profile as the TKC scales, but I haven't actually had a, a chance to handle one or test it out, swap between, you know, try this same experiment out with 3D scales. So unfortunately I don't have an answer for you on that right now. Um, <clears throat> but if anybody is willing to be the guinea pig for that and send me their knife, um, if you're thinking about ordering a sheath anyway, I'll definitely feature a little uh, cameo on that kind of, on that experiment in that video on your project so uh, let me know on that so okay guys that is I think all I've got for you on these so let me know what you think of these knives let me know what you think of these sheets let me know what you think of the tech lock adapter as a good breakaway option um, let me know what you think of this beautiful beach and tactical baldrick sling drop leg all that good stuff these are some of the best knives that you can buy uh, I absolutely love SE. I am an SE fanboy for sure. Um, they just produce high quality stuff and have a, a no question asked lifetime warranty, which really makes me confident that their gear is going to hold up. And if it doesn't, hey, I get a free knife out of it. So, all right, guys, that's what I've got for you. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around for the next one. God bless.